On today's Locked On Texan podcast, one T. Johnson is out. Another T. Johnson is in. What does signing Tyrone Johnson mean for the Houston Texans wide receiver group? And how long will Brandon Cooks be in the city of Houston? Is he on his way out? We're going to talk about all of that here on today's episode of the Locked On Texan podcast. You are Locked On Texans, your daily Houston Texans podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. Welcome, everybody, to a Wednesday edition of the Locked On Texan Podcast, a part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. John Hickman, Cody Davis. Y'all know why we're here. We got to talk about what seems to be a. I'm not going to call it a chaotic situation right now with the Houston Texans <laughs> and their wide receiver group, but just a lot of uncertainty. All right, We're going to talk about Brandon Cooks. We've got to talk about the man that a lot of people wanted to see here in town. Tyler Johnson mm. has been uh, let go, uh, leaves Houston with two games played, 29 snaps, no target, and Tyler Johnson has been released for – Tyrone Johnson, who the Houston Texans signed on Tuesday, uh, 2020. Tyrone Johnson had nearly 400 receiving yards, uh, 20 yards per catch, three touchdowns, ran a 4-3-6-40. So he got some speed on him. Hopefully that may help Houston open up the playbook, stretch out the field a little bit, hit some more plays down the field. However, I don't think that's been the problem, right? They got some speedy guys here in town that – they're able to kind of hit down the field if they trust their quarterback to do so, but that hasn't happened. We're looking at Tyron Johnson in, Tyler Johnson out. Cody, as a member of the media, credential member of the media who's been around this team, who, you know, when when Tyler was brought in after the Bucks let him go and Houston Texans was awarding him on the waiver wire, you know, from that point, because there was a lot of inactive games, and the excuse and reasoning behind it, rather, was, well, we're just trying to get him up to speed. We've seen Houston do that with the likes of Gary Wallow. We've seen Houston do that with the likes of, you know, Christian Harris, who had an opportunity to play on Sunday. We'll talk about him later in the show. But did, was there ever a real feel that Houston was ever going to give him an opportunity to make plays for this offense, or was he just a body for just in case something happens, which, by the way, if that was the route, you got Johnny Johnson the third, you got Jalen Kemp, two guys that not only would have been a body, but would have been a body that you can use because they've been around that team and know the playbook and know what Pepper Hamilton would like to do offensively. So bringing it back to you, was it always just smoke and mirrors or did it just not work out? Well, as of right now, it just seems like everything that – they talked about was just smoke, smoke and mirrors. And I talked about it on this show. I wrote about it on SI on Texans daily. And I actually had an opportunity to talk to Tyler Johnson myself, did an exclusive on him. And you know, the one thing that he talked about, the one thing that Lovey Smith talked about, and we talked to Lovey Smith doing his media availabilities. Um, the one thing that Pep Hamilton talked about um doing his media availability was the fact that they were trying to get Tyler Johnson caught up to the playbook. Okay, I understand that with him being a part of the Tampa Bay Buccaneers for the first two, three years of his career, and you know, you come over to the Houston Texans, of course, there's a big drastic change in playbook to what he is used to and what the Houston Texans are, are working with especially considering that there's a big change in quarterback, which as of right now, I mean, you know, I think, I don't think that, that that much of a big change in quarterback, but you know, I say all that just to say at first that seemed like a realistic, I, I guess I could call it an excuse now, because like I just mentioned, even Tyler Johnson talked about it when I had an opportunity to talk to him one-on-one -on -one. Um, in Tampa Bay. He learned how important it was to learn the playbook. Okay, I'll get it. However, it always bugged me that you went out and you signed or you went out and claimed OJ Howard off waivers. And within a week, he's starting who he's starting. Who week one of the regular season and has continued to play throughout the first six games of the season. And Tyler Johnson was always getting a healthy scratch, healthy scratch, healthy scratch. Then you finally put him in the game. He only plays two games and he doesn't have a target. 
And the last game when he was a part of this roster, John, as you alluded to on Monday's show, he was a healthy scratch. And then 48 hours later, you release him. The only thing that I can think of is the fact that when I go back and I take a look at his departure from Tampa Bay, um, the Buccaneers came out and said that they had a hard time trying to get Tyler Johnston adjusted to playing special teams. And that is the only logic scenario at the time of this recording that I can think of as of right now, because we all know, unless your name is Brandon Cooks, Laramie Tonso, um, you know, some of the big name players, the Texans want so many of their guys to be versatile in special teams. And I'm looking at this from a standpoint Maybe, just maybe, and I'm going to find out later on, but maybe Tyler Johnson did not have an opportunity to or or have the willingness to go out there and play on special teams and possibly that hinder his time here in, his, in the city of Houston just like it did in Tampa Bay. But, John, once again, if that is the case, I'm kind of upset at the Houston Texans because ever since week one, you and I have been talking about it time and time again, not just us, our guests that we had on this podcast, it's not just us, other Texans reporter. We all look at this wide receiving core, especially with the loss of John Mechie, and we continue to say that this is a wide receiving core who needs to have more weapons. I'm not about to sit here and say Tyler Johnson is about to be 2.0 DeAndre Hopkins and Andre Johnson, whatever the case might be. But when I take a look at the lack of production that this team has had in their wide receiving core, Tyler Johnson could have given this team some type of some type of extra push through the first six games of the season. With that being said, you go out and sign Tyrod Johnson, and not only that, you automatically elevate elevate him to your 53-man roster. Now, the next problem is, if you want to get your players adjusted to the playbook, why in the hell did you automatically sign Tyron Johnson to the 53-man roster when you have guys like Davion Davis, Jalen Kemp, and Johnny Johnson III, and the latter of the two has been a part of this organization since training camp? Why did you not give them an opportunity? Yes, I understand that Tyron Johnson played under Pep Hamilton as, the, as that team offensive coordinator with the Los Angeles Chargers. I understand that. I get it. However, we still don't know what Tyron Johnson can do, but when we take a look at guys like Devion Davis, who is another speedy wide receiver who has showcased the ability to stretch the field and be somewhat of a reliable deep threat receiver downfield, we know what he can do when you take a look at his production of last year. Jalen Kemp, a 6'2", 6'3", another bigger body receiver that you possibly might need depending on how long um, Nico Collins is going to be out. Then, of course, you take a look at Johnny Johnson III. It seems like this team has been missing a slot receiver especially with the loss of John Mechie I say all that just to say there's a lot of confusion going on with the Houston Texans wide receiving core especially considering like I just mentioned you signed Tyrod Johnson and he automatically was elevated to the 53 man roster yeah so I look at Tyron Johnson a player who by the way two years ago where was he well he was in LA with the Chargers with Pep Hamilton, like I just with, mentioned. With, with Pep Hamilton. So that's important, right? I think chemistry is important. Uh, Tyler Johnson didn't really have a connection with anybody on the coaching staff here in Houston. But for me, Cody, <clears throat> I think that the whole Tyler Johnson experience <laughs> reminds me a little bit of the Anthony Miller experience, which reminds me a that's little bit a of the one. Shaq Lawson experience. Which, a good one. you know, up until Sunday reminded me about the Dare experience. It's been a total waste of time when it has been. We like what Nick Casario could do as a draft scout, right? Bringing in players. I think AJ Can has had a good offseason uh, season so far for his role. Uh, I think that. There's been some good players that come here in Houston, but then there's been some guys that's just been a complete waste of time that from jump, you may have been better off going with some guys that is already on your practice squad or entrusting some other player that's already on your roster with some of the duties if you're not going to allow these guys to play football. Again, Shaq Lawson, Anthony Miller, 
Uh, Dare again until Sunday. Tyler Johnson goes right into that category because it was a waste of time, not only for the Houston Texans, but more so, it's been a waste of time for those players. <laughs> like, if I'm Tyler Johnson, I'm hot right now because I've seen Julio go down. I've seen uh, Chris Godwin not be able to play. I've seen Brady not have any of the targets that he had may have been looking forward to. And I could have been that guy. I could have been right there, Brady. I could have been at least doing something to where if it ain't this year, maybe next year I could go along, get a bigger bag, play for another team in a more uh, in a bigger role. Again, just a waste of time. And with Tyron Johnson, Tyron Johnson coming in, listen, you don't want Nico Collins to be out for an extended period of time. As of right now, we are recording this uh, later Tuesday evening for Wednesday. We'll hear tomorrow or Wednesday about Nico Collins and his health status. But you don't want Nico to be out a bunch of games. The uncertainty of Brandon Cooks, which we'll get into, and then everybody else in that receiver room, it's just Philip Dorsett and Chris Moore, and neither one of those guys <laughs> combined together make up for a number three receiver for this team. Not because they have been featured, but they haven't been featured enough to even prove that they can be a number three or four. He has to play, right? Like, at the very least, a four, three, six, forty speed. Get him out on edge. Let's do some jet sweeps. Or make a make a second and eight, maybe a, a third and four. Help him out in the run game. Help out get the offensive fluidity going. But this cannot be another player that comes to town who's already on a 53-man roster. So I'm assuming against it, but comes to town and not play for weeks in, and, and there's no reason why. When the guy that you have in that position isn't necessarily producing and your offense has been stale as well. I think Tyrone Johnson comes in, if not week one, well, the first week that he's been here, which will be today, maybe the following week, He's going to possibly get that O.J. Howard treatment, right? Like, we, we need you to play. We need you to play right now. So, we'll see how it turns out. I just, again, a bunch of waste of time going on right now for the Houston Texans. And the one thing that I don't understand, right, whether it be Anthony Miller, Shaq Lawson, and now um, Tyler Johnson, it's not like the Texans are a championship playoff caliber team. And it's like, oh, you're not getting the opportunity because we don't want to mess up the chemistry and the camaraderie that we have that is leading us to win games. You know, we don't want to mess up the fact that we have something good going on. It confuses me even more because this is one of the worst teams in the league. And like you just mentioned, With John. <laughs> one of the worst receiving groups. Yes. In the so, league. so. And this is a, re a rebuilding year. And over the last two years, what I, what have I been preaching? If anything, the, the, the city of Houston for the Houston Texans can be a place to where if you have untapped potential, i.e. like Tyler Johnson, this should be the perfect scenario for you to see if you could find a home here in the city of Houston. Or if not, you could have a good audition and get a bag somewhere else. That's that. I think that's what confuses me even more. <laughs> Well, let me and let me also say this: We are still talking about the NFL. We are still talking about the grind of the NFL. It wouldn't be far fetched if it just didn't work out. You're On right. Ends. Mutual way. Listen, y'all not playing me. Y'all not giving me any targets. I'm out there to be a, an extra tight end. An extra tackle on the edge out there to seal off runs for Damian Pierce. I don't necessarily want to be here. You're not playing me enough. I'm not any a part of anything for the future. So I know you don't want me to be here. Let's just go ahead and part ways if I'm in the Houston, Texas, and Tyler Johnson. Or you can look at it like this. Houston comes to him and say, Tyler, whatever your assignment is and what we want your assignment to be, you're just not getting it down. It's just not working out. So go right ahead. And we'll let you go. That can be a possibility. Either way, yeah, I, I think this could have been found out a long time ago. That's just me. Listen, these days, every new potential hire can feel like a high stakes wager for your small business. You want to be 100% certain that you have access to the best qualified candidates available. That's why you have to check out LinkedIn Jobs. LinkedIn Jobs helps you find the right people for your team faster and for free, super easy. Let me tell you how easy it is. You're gonna add your job to the LinkedIn website, right? Boom, after that, 
Go ahead and add the purple hiring frame to your LinkedIn profile to spread, spread the word that you are hiring. Simple tools like screening questions make it super easy for you to find the best candidates for your jobs. The right candidate with the right skills and the right experience so you can quickly prioritize who you want to interview and hire. LinkedIn Jobs helps you find the qualified candidates to talk to that you want to talk to faster. Post your job for free at LinkedIn.com slash LockedOnNFL. That's LinkedIn.com slash LockedOnNFL to post your job for free. Terms and conditions apply. So this Thursday, I got a golf tournament I got to be at for work, right? I'm super excited about it. Went and bought me a new golf shirt. And then, guess what came in the mail? My bird dogs. My bird dog shorts came in the mail. And the bird dog pants and shorts are perfect for the fall weather. Even better for golf. Right? Got, them, got my legs out. Beautiful brown skin. My calves looking good. Everything popping. And they're comfortable. Right? You cannot beat comfort. You can't do that. And I might not play like Tiger Woods. However, I may feel just as good as Tiger Woods with a couple of extra billions missing out of my account. Bird dog joggers are high quality, more high quality than Lululemon and $20 less. That's what we're talking about here. Better quality, cheaper. Go buy some bird dogs today. Right? Still wear shorts in the winter. Doesn't matter if you're in Florida or 10 degrees in New England or Chicago. They have their signature shorts with built-in liners, the most comfortable shorts in existence. They not lying. I ain't lying to you. What they ain't gonna do is lie to you. Other thing I'm gonna do is love you. Go to birddogs.com right now. It's a promo code locked on, and they'll throw in a free bird dog rope hat. That's birddogs.com promo code locked on, and boom, a free hat with your pair of bird dogs, the most comfortable shorts pants and sweatpants with built-in liners you will not take these things off unless you got a shower please shower jane will take them off i promise you that again birddogs.com promo code locked on welcome back in ladies and gentlemen to this wednesday installment of locked on texans and we talked about this a little bit on yesterday and i think we kind of need to extend on this topic because if you yeah. guys have been looking on social media, Brandon yeah. Cooks has been liking can, a lot of tweets and Instagram posts that are connecting him to trade rumors and trade value. And John, I don't want to have the discussion about whether or not the Texans should trade Brandon Cooks, but I do want to have the discussion about whether or not the Texans can actually afford to wait trade. A minute, wait 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 a minute. We gonna talk about Brandon Cooks. I'm gonna let you talk, but we gotta talk about at least what he's been doing on Twitter. Mm -hmm. Texan Wires post: Cooks has been the object of trade speculation with the trade deadline looming, and may have increased his value with his solid performance. I don't think it was that solid, but he liked that post. Uh, again, another day ago, there are plenty of NFL teams that need wide receiver help before the November first deadline, and these five teams should call the Texans about Brandon Cooks. He liked that post as well. Also, Brandon <laughs> Cooks, somebody was responding to another person and said, Brandon Cooks, he goes stale if not on a new team. After two-plus years, Nico Collins is the future in Houston, uh, if Houston has a future. He liked that post as well. Then, Damn. of course, you know, one thing athletes going to do is they're going to post something about God or religion. They're going to do that. But oh, you walked on water. So I know you can walk on anything that overwhelms us. Deliver me. And that may just be about, you know, let me, I'm playing too much maybe just a little bit, but maybe you want to be delivered to another team. I don't know. I don't know, but, um, you know, and, and that's why I kind of want to have this, this discussion about whether or not the Texans can actually afford to trade. Brandon Cooks, because John, I think you made a really good point on Twitter, and I think you also talked about it on yesterday when I asked you about who are some of the Texans' best trade assets. So you mentioned Larry Matonso, and of course, with the trade deadline, I don't know why, but every time people say Texans trade, they always want to say Larry Matonso. But you made a great let me, point. Let me let me clarify. I don't believe the Texans should trade Larry Matonso. I think Larry Matonso is the Houston Texans' best asset. I don't think they should, but if they would, 
that would be their best asset to move on from. I think if they do move on from it, that will hit the growth of Kenyon Green and Damian Pierce. I'm sorry. Yes, and that's exactly where I was going because you talked about, you know, moving on from Larry Tunso is going to, you know, mess up the growth of Keon Green and, and the rest of the Texans young offensive linemen. However, with that being said, when you take a look at Brandon Cooks, um, I kind of look at this from a standpoint, if they do move on from Cooks, then I think that's going to hinder the growth of the Houston Texans on the offensive side of the ball. When you take a look at um, a young wide receiver in John Mechie, you also take a look at a still damn good developing um, young wide receiver in Nico Collins. But not only that, Davis Mills is still in the audition phase of his career. And if you move on from Brandon Cooks, in the midst of having Nico Collins put on the shelf due to an injury for, let's say, the next two to three weeks, then you're looking at a situation where Davis Mills is going to be set up for fail, for set up to fail. Now, I get it. I understand it. When you take a look at Brandon Cooks' production over the first six games of the season, he has not looked the same. As a matter of fact, when you compare his production to last season through the first six games, through the first six games of last season, this is a guy that already had recorded 481 yards with 40 catches, and he already had two games where he eclipsed over 200 receiving yards. First six games of this year, Brandon Cooks has only recorded 281 yards on 28 catching, and he has not eclipsed over 100 receiving yards. So, John, I gave my thoughts. I don't think it's a good idea for the Houston Texans to depart from Brandon Cooks, at least for the remainder of this season, but the floor is yours, my brother. Does Cooks make sense if he moves the needle? That's, that's my question, not only for you, Cody, but for the people that watch this show. Listen, right? If you can't comment on YouTube, tweet us. If you're on YouTube, comment. You know how we get down. Does it make sense if he moves the needle? Brandon Cooks doesn't move the needle for this team offensively right now. So it makes sense if Houston says, you know what? Thank you for your service. Thank you for your veteran leadership and getting us through the David Cully era, which only lasted a few months. Thank you for being what you were on and off the field. But as of right now, we have no faith that your presence makes this team go any further than what we are already projecting our season to be. And it's kind of like Eric Gordon for the Rockets. Like, everybody wants Eric Gordon gone or whatever the case is. But Eric Gordon was here in Houston for some good glory days. And now the sense is, let him go enjoy somebody else we can win, right? I look at Brandon Cooks the same thing. Like, I don't think, just like Eric Gordon, I don't think neither one of those guys really pushed the needle in the direction that you want your team to be, right? Everybody wants their team to be a winner. Everybody wants their team to be, you know, uh, in, 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 in the NFL, you want your offense to be explosive. You, you th This is what the NFL has came down to now. And Brandon Cooks doesn't move that needle to get Houston over that hump. Because if he was moving the needle, then he wouldn't have the pedestrian numbers that he's had. This offense ha wouldn't look, in terms of the passing game, mundane and vanilla at times like it has compared to last year where he was explosive, right? He was making those plays. And so if I look at – if this is the needle on the line, right, and I say, well, if we move on from Brandon Cooks, the, 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 if, if we keep him, the needle goes this way and we're able to kind of trend upwards. You can't say that because through seven, six games, this is what his needle's been, flat. So it does make sense for Houston to move on from Brandon Cooks in my eyes. Whether they want to do it in season or not, if you want to go ahead and, and maybe find a team that's desperate for a wide receiver help right now that can really help their offense out like a team, maybe Aaron Rodgers, who Houston has somewhat of a, a relationship with when they dealt ran a call back to Green Bay. I'm not sure, man, but at some point, the realism has set in. Right, We call Monday show looking in the mirror. They got to look in the mirror and understand that with November 1st coming up, it may be in the Houston Texans' best interest to mutually part ways with them and just say, hey, where you want to go, 
Let's figure out who has the best deal for us. We'll go ahead and trade you to a contender. We'll get our compensation back in return, and we thank you a lot, which is why I asked Brandon K. Scott this question a few weeks ago, and I wanted to pose it to everybody. What will Brandon Cook's legacy for the Houston Texans be like? And it looks like ultimately it'll be just a guy that was here passing time. I understand where you're coming from, but, John, like I just mentioned. Who's a great good they, player? I'm, if I'm they – Oh yeah, yeah, uh, the, the damn good player. Like I like I mentioned, and I think B Scott said it as well. Um, you're looking at arguably the third best wide receiver in, in franchise history. Um, but John, like I just mentioned, if Brandon Cooks move on, let's say they trade him before the trade deadline in the next week or so, that is going to hinder the development of Davis Mills. And you and you talked about it a lot here on this show already. Like due to the lack of weapons he have in that wide receiving core he's basically already set up to fail now you're going to take away his favorite target well what are we doing now like how are we going to have a true evaluation of davis mills for the remainder of the season if brandon cooks is no longer here that's a great question and but i mean how they've been Collins, playing so far it doesn't seem like his development even matters because if it did we wouldn't be sitting here talking about an in-season move for tyrone johnson we wouldn't be sitting here talking about yeah, the sure. lack of wide receivers that may not be a number three or four on this team because of the lack of playing time. That we wouldn't talk about that. So, again, the offense that Houston has right now, what is this Houston offense? A lot of people may say they don't know. The Houston offense right now is ODP. <laughs> ODP. Oh, like, that's the Houston offense right now. And it's going to be that for the rest of the year. Does Brandon Cooks move the needle offensively for you to put points on the board and move the ball, move the chain? No. One TD on the year, another drop TD, hasn't been on the same page with Davis Mills the entire year, right? This offense has looked stale through how many, how many times through how many games? Go ahead and do right bomb. He's been quiet. He's came to work. He's... He's endorsed a very bad coaching hire. He's been he's been adverse. He's been through adversity with with uh, uh, Deshaun Watson. Hey, you know what? Do right by him. Get him about this building. Let him go flourish somewhere else. Let him ride out into the sunset. And I know Brandon Cook said a couple years ago he ain't trying to get traded no more. But how you feel now, Cody? Tonight, four picks can win me a hundred and forty dollars. Four picks can win me a hundred dollars. Four picks can win me a hundred and ten dollars, and five picks could possibly win me one hundred dollars. You know where I'm getting this from? Prize picks. Super simple, super easy. How does it work? Pick two to five players. If they score more or less than their prize picks projections, you can win up to ten times your money on any entry. So what am I talking about? Monte Morris. Right now. I took the over on nine and a half points. Sadiq Bay, the over on five rebounds. Kevin Looney, the over on two assists. And Jaden Ivey, the over on 4.5 assists. I think I can make me some money tonight, man. And you can too at Prize Picks. Super simple, super easy. Once again, download the Prize Picks app or go to prizepicks.com to sign up and play fantasy, daily fantasy sports the fun way. First time users can receive a 100% instant deposit match up to $100 with promo code locked on. If you deposit 100, prize picks will give you 100. Deposit 50, they're going to give you 50. Don't forget to enter promo code locked on and sign up for an instant deposit match up to $100. Safe and fast withdrawals currently operational in over 30 states and Canada. Y'all already know where to go, man. Prize picks. Dot com or download the app on your phone prize picks app that simple make money stay happy that's how we do it on this side welcome back in locked on texans listeners and viewers out there thank you guys for sticking around hearing us through our uh shenanigans today got to talk about lovey smith who is prepared to expand christian harris role a little bit more <laughs> coming up now listen Christian Harris missed the entire first half of the season up until the bye week, came back against the Raiders and played in 68% of the snaps after not playing in any of the snaps. Again, as I mentioned, uh, missed some time 
Cody, do you think that's the right move to continue to put Christian Harris out there? Who, you know, early in the game, there was a third and long. Houston and Lovey Smith, Miles Smith, collectively, they trusted Christian Harris out there on that third and long. I believe Houston got off the field on that one as well. Cannot remember. But is it too much, too early, or you've rested and waited enough? We need for you to play football for us. Um. Honestly, I, I honestly do believe that it's the right move. You know, first and foremost, at one, four, and one, you're probably about to be one, five, and one after Sunday's game. But um, the one thing that I would say is this is the perfect opportunity for the Houston Texans to continue developing their young guys. And we all know whether they was going to be a better team or the same old team as the last two years, we all knew at the end of the day the top priority for the Texans were going to be the development of their young players. And when you take a look at a guy like Christian Harris, he is one of one of the players who can potentially be a foundational piece for this organization, especially considering how subpar the Texans linebacker core has been. Not only that, um, I remember last week when we had an opportunity to talk to Lovey Smith. Lovey Smith did say that Christian Harris has done a great job learning the playbook, learning the system on the sidelines. So when you com- when you combine health, development. And apparently as much time he spent studying the playbook, why not give him more of a more of a responsibility moving forward? Yeah, Levy, Levy Smith, excuse me, said it's pretty simple how we do it. Who are our best options that we feel like we can be successful with defensively? If we think he's one of them, we'll find ways to get him out on that field. I would say Christian Harris is one of those guys, and we found a way to start the process yesterday. He didn't do anything yesterday that said we should give him less. To me, he did things that said we should give him more. We'll see how that continues to play out. I think that that was, if he continues to play more, got to look at the relationship between Kamu and Christian Kersey right now Hmm. with this coaching staff. It is a business, and in their sample size that they've shown this team this year, I mean, I think Christian Harris and Gary Wallow and Hanson and Cashman whenever he's healthy to play. I think all of those guys have shown that in their small situational roles that they deserve to be out there a little bit more. But at the very least, if you're going to continue to have Christian Harris out there on that field, man, allow him to be at, in a, at the athletic linebacker that we know he can be and get out to the quarterback, right? Move mm-hmm. him around, do some crazy things with him, allow him to be an athlete. Also, Dar- Dare, excuse me, Ogubu Wale, should be seeing some more time, Cody. Our guy, finally, we uh, yes, finally getting some more action with him. Uh, on Sunday, he caught with five passes for 50 plus yards. And Lovey Smith seems like he might want to get him out there on that field. Does that mean the end of Rex Burkhead? No, <laughs> don't get your hopes up. I think we also got to talk about later in the week about Deron Payne. The commanders are wanting to move on from him. A defensive tackle that makes it hard for you to run on. Hmm. Um, I know he may want to go to a contender, but uh, if I'm Houston, I'm trying to figure out what they want for him, bring him in, and then let's go ahead and get you extended because we need you here for a very long time. I would love that move because DJ Reader departed this organization about, what, three years ago, and the Houston Texans (laughs) have had (laughs) – if not one of the worst, the worst run defense over the last three years. And John, They've had the this worst, organization. I think each of the last two years, for sure. <laughs> oh, definitely the last two years. Uh, but, um, you know, I would love for that to happen. Um, you know, the Texans got basically everything possible that Washington might be looking for in terms of getting something valuable back in return, but they need to do something with this run defense because going into Sunday's game against the um, Tennessee Titans, this is a team that is giving up someone the ballpark between 140 to 160 yards on the ground, and that is way too much. Yeah, Derrick Henry's starting to run that ball, man. Yes, he's starting to, he's starting to find field. his groove, and we have already seen Derrick Henry record over 200 yards on the ground at least, what, two, maybe three times against the Texans? <coughs> they got to get it right. And Deron Payne is a unrestricted free agent next year. So I think he is one of those guys. If they don't get him during this season, how much money do you want? We can throw it out to you, and maybe you can come help fix some of our problems. 
Thank you guys for checking out today's show of the Locked On Texan Podcast. Follow me on Twitter at John underscore Hickman 12. Also, like, comment, subscribe to the Locked On Texans YouTube page as well. And as always, I'm your host, Cody Davis. Please remember to follow me on Twitter at Cody Davis underscore 24. Once again, that's Cody C O T Y D A V I S underscore 24. Until next time, ladies and gentlemen, peace.